First of all, I want to thank God for just a gorgeous, gorgeous day that we have to be out here in Rosine, in Kentucky, in the United States. It's an awesome day. This day has been waited for for a long time, so I'm not going to proceed very long. We got some special guests, and some special things to be said. I just wanted to welcome everybody, and to begin tonight, today, I would like to introduce to you Judge David Johnson. Okay, before we get started, we're going to uh, get on the right mood here of Bill Monroe, and we're going to ask Mackenzie Bell to play Jerusalem Ridge. It's a great day to be here. Uh, we're really proud that we finally got to this date, but we'll talk about that a little more later. Right now, I'm supposed to introduce uh, folks that are here. There's way too many that I, I know I'll miss some. We've got two of our magistrates here today. We've got Sam uh, Small and, and um, Larry Morphew. We've got our uh, PVA, Jason Chen, here today. We've got Field Representative Jason Hassett from Rand Paul's office here. We've got Rebecca Rittenhouse from the Governor's office here. We've got Senator C.B. Embry here, right up here. Uh, we've got former Senator Virgil Moore, who has always been encouraging and has helped on these projects all the years. Uh, we've got a lot of musicians here today, including Guy Stevenson, one of the uh, uh, Blue Grace boys. Our sheriff is here. Uh, sheriff Tracy Beatty is here. And we're really proud of that. Um, and uh, anybody that I leave out, I'm sure some Mayor Paul Sanifer's here. We're really proud that he's here. We've got several from our office here. Uh, Bill Burden and Kenny Autry from uh, our office is here, as, um, as well as Miranda Funk. And so we're proud of that. We've got the, the Chase of Vincent's here. He's, he's part of us. He's our uh, OC, the director. But I'm not going to take all day with this. And, uh, uh, yeah, they're pointing at Charlie Shields. So 
Uh, I just sort of take for granted he's everywhere. I, he's where I'm at. Yeah, and James and Jimbo Monroe are here. And by the way, when I speak, when it comes my time on the agenda to speak, I'm going to put James in there with me then. Uh, and right now, I want to introduce to you Miss Wanda Sailing and the Bluegrass Youngins. We uh, really appreciate being uh, invited to this and uh, considered an honor. Uh, <coughs> we <coughs> sign us. Uh, the Bluegrass Youngins, our program, Bluegrass Music in Our School, started at Horse Branch and it went on to Beaver Dam and to Western. Those three schools uh, were given uh, donations that were private donations that were, uh, we were able to get started. And today, you're going to listen to uh, what I'm calling the AA group. It's the advanced, advanced group. When you can get the group to where they can do it by themselves, that is the ultimate. And that's what we're going to be able to do today. And it's wonderful that the working together to get to where we are today, because many, many people had a dream about this event that's going on right now. And that dream started with, I, I almost say started with the, uh, our kids because they wanted the kids, they wanted to keep the bluegrass music alive and they were using uh, the schools and the kids to do that. So we want to show you what we can do. And this is the Bluegrass Youngins. And um, uh, there was a mistake in the program, They, but that's okay. But I want everybody to know it's Bluegrass Youngins. And today we gave it a special, uh, special, um, little title uh, each gig that we have uh, I try to do a special thing this is the first groundbreaking bluegrass music in our schools program band that's who they are <laughs> and they're going to uh, the first song they're going to do and later they're going to do another one is uh, Blue Moon of Kentucky
Well, we're proud to be here today. It's been a long time coming. We've been talking about this for many, many years. Uh, when I was uh, elected judge executive of the county, it was a high priority on my list to try to see uh, this museum built. Uh, it took many twists and turns during that time. And uh, in uh, uh, a few years ago, 2015, we finally convinced uh, uh, Governor Boshear, Jason Chin's here with us today. He was with me when we went to see him in Frankfurt about it. And uh, we found out a uh, governor was going out of office, so had to think outside the box on how to get some funding from him, but we did. Uh, and, uh, and I'm really proud of, of that. And it's just a dream. Uh, Bill Monroe's uh, legacy and what he uh, did for this, uh, for the world actually, as far as uh, uh, poetry and the sound, as we say here a lot of times, the uh, uh, sounds and scenes, uh, that came from James, who's here today, uh, and a uh, song he wrote as a tribute to his father. And we coined that line out of that song. And, and uh, so that's what it amounts to. That, that's what Bill created, the sounds and scenes. You heard Mackenzie Bell play Jerusalem Ridge. And that's a creation from uh, Bill Monroe. It's just hard to imagine that that many uh, things could come from uh, a man. Not just words, but uh, sounds too that you can uh, that live, live forever. Uh, this museum... With that's what it will tell by the songs we'll have in there and by the uh, the memorabilia that we'll have there it's just going to tell the story of his life and his life is the story of this uh, kind of music and without bluegrass music country music would be very boring rock and roll wouldn't exist and uh, jazz wouldn't even be the same without what Bill Monroe brought to, to the world. Uh, and uh, I don't, I, I'm trying to hide it, but you may have, it's, it, it may have sneaked in here that uh, I was a great big fan myself. And uh, the fact that uh, this is what our uh, county stands for as far as tourism goes, I'm just really proud of this day. And uh, I'm not gonna take up all your time with it, but I'm going to introduce to you Mr. Chris Jocelyn, of the director of the IBM in Owensboro. Chris. Thank you, Mr. Johnson. And I want to thank uh, Jody Fleener for inviting me to, to be here today on on such a banner day for Rosine and for o Ohio County, really a banner day for the community of bluegrass and people throughout this region and throughout the Commonwealth and throughout the country uh, for that matter. You know, the first recording that, uh, that I ever heard, remember hearing of bluegrass music was Bill Monroe and his bluegrass boys playing bluegrass breakdown. And although I didn't grow up in a family of bluegrass musicians, my older brother and I um, began playing music at roughly the same time and we discovered bluegrass music together and um, and that really led to a lifelong passion for both of us as as uh, engaged musicians on bluegrass music and now that passion has become my vocation leading the International Bluegrass Music Museum and Hall of Fame in Owensboro. When the news of this project first hit my wife and I quickly purchased um, our brick that uh, for the Blue Moon walkway so you know, as part of the bluegrass community, we're, we're proud of this project and we're proud to have a tangible connection uh, to this project as well. You know, I have a story. I mentioned that uh, I learned to play bluegrass with my brother, and I know most folks here affiliated with bluegrass music have a story that's very unique to them, very personal. And you know, uh, Bill Monroe had a story too, and his story is rooted right here in Rosine, Kentucky, this in Ohio County. This is a community that shaped this man, this is a community that informed his creativity um, that ultimately resulted in this great original 
American art form of bluegrass music. So personally, as a bluegrass musician, I love the fact that bluegrass music, music is rooted in time, place, and person. And that person, of course, is Bill Monroe. And that place is right here in Rosine, Kentucky, in Ohio County, which is the source of it all. So the dream of creating the Bill Monroe Museum has been kept alive and championed for a long, long time. And many of you standing here today have been part of that journey from the beginning. And today, it's so great to know that today is all about the destination. Today, the dream becomes a reality as you break ground on this beautiful facility. And as, as you embark on this new chapter that includes the Bill Monroe Museum, I can't help but think about all the opportunity that lies ahead. The opportunity to preserve and to celebrate Bill Monroe's le legacy. As I mentioned, people will come here from around the globe to celebrate bluegrass music and to celebrate Bill Monroe, all right here where the music began at the very source. There's an opportunity to showcase everything that's great about Ohio County. I mean, this community is very rich in history, very rich in culture, and rich in talent, as we've seen by the bluegrass youngins and with Mackenzie Bell. So what a great opportunity to showcase this talent and the best that Ohio County has to offer. You know, with this opportunity also comes responsibility. First and foremost is the responsibility to be great hosts. Because bluegrass music, music, it's certainly about the music, but it's about the people and the interactions that many of you will have with the visitors who come to Rosine in Ohio County will make all the difference. It will be the secret ingredient that makes the artifacts and the objects and the stories and the culture and the history come alive. It's that personal connection that visitors will have with you as hosts that will transform their activity into an experience. And that kind of personal connection, that kind of experience will motivate people to tell their friends and to come back time and time again. There's also the responsibility to harness the power of working together, both here in Ohio County and throughout the region. There is strength in numbers, and the key to creating a destination is linking together multiple must-see stops and must-see moments that on their own might not be enough to compel a road trip, but when you link them all together, it creates something that's very unique and something that can only be experienced right here. And to quote Bill Monroe, that's powerful, powerful indeed. So the world needs a bluegrass, a Bill Monroe Museum. Let's face it, we deserve a Bill Monroe Museum. Is that right? So we can pay homage to the man himself, so we can celebrate the, the music, so we can experience it right here at the very source where it all began. So today begins the final steps in the journey to make that a reality. And I want to congratulate everyone here in Rosine, Ohio County, for your perseverance, for your passion to see this through. And I want to thank you so much for letting me share this wonderful occasion with you today. Thank you very much. Thank you, Judge, Chris. And uh, that, that is the sentiment. It's, it has started here, and it'll spread all around. Just as people come from all around the world, they'll start here. They'll see how Bill started it and how it began and became an international genre that spread all around the world. They'll see the birth here, go to the home place, see the birth, and then go over to Owensboro and see how it spread all over the, around the world. And that family yeah. connection that Chris spoke about is here today. At this time, I would like to introduce Bill's son, James Monroe. I did trick him. <laughs> hey, James, where's your cane? Well, I need one today, don't I? Can y'all hear me? It's good to be here today. I've, I've been up here some other days, too, when we had a groundbreak. It seemed like a 20 years back. I can't remember the, the time of it. But it was raining that day. I remember that. I got some pictures of it. Me and my boy found some pictures the other day of it. Jimbo's up here. Give him a little hand, would you please? He don't like that name, Jimbo. He, uh, he was named after me. I was named after my grandfather. And whenever my dad was going to was on the opera and he brought my boy up there with him, he said, uh, what do you want me to call you tonight? He said, well, Jim would be good. Did dad just go on and say, say here's Jimbo Monroe now. <laughs> my father liked that name, so he kept on calling him that. 
But it's good to be here with you today. Good to see all the folks I know here. And good to see the judge. He looks like he's gained some weight too. <laughs> but we, uh, this thing's been a long time coming. And we're glad to see it finally get started. And uh, uh, all the people that's helped on it, I, I know you all appreciate that. It's good to have a place where my father can have his things for people to see now. Because they do come from all over the world up here to see him. And uh, when we buried him here, they came from all over to see him up here. And you can always find some quarters up there on that, on that gravesite. Because he always gave kids quarters wherever he went, you know. And uh, that's just part of his heritage, I think, too, you know. But it's good to be here with you today, and I uh, hope this thing turned out well. Thank you. You told me to say a few words, didn't you? Yes, you're perfect. <laughs> Another little surprise that's not on the agenda is um, we have a donation, or a loan to talk about. If I could call up uh, Dwayne Patterson, please. everybody doing today beautiful day uh, as most of you know back when this dream started uh, there was a mandolin builder right up the road here named Brian England built a couple of mandolins and uh, one of them uh, they had to do some excavating down at the old home place and uh, they saved some of the wood and built a beautiful beautiful one-of-a-kind mandolin and uh, then they built another mandolin that came out of parts of the wood that was inside the old home and somehow or another, things got put on hold and the deal went sideways a little bit or something and uh, the foundation didn't get them. And uh, I scraped up everything I could find and what money I could and traded the guy out of them and they've been at my house ever since. And uh, I think this is the proper place for them. And uh, today I'm going to present them to the Bill Monroe Foundation Museum Project until the money can be raised that they can give me part of my money back. But it's an honor to be the caretaker of them, and this is the place for them. They're beautiful works of art, and uh, they are here today. They're over there under the little tent. If anybody would like to look at them, I think they're going to take some photographs and try to raise some money where they can come home to their rightful home. Thank you. Thank you, Dwayne. And those kind of things are happening all the time. When the first announcements of the museum happened, my phone started ringing. In fact, a fellow co contacted me, David Hall, from Atlanta, and a little side trip because my son lives down there, so I'm taking the truck and we're gonna go down there and I'll visit my son and I'll visit David because David told me he has an entire garage that he has been saving for the opening of a Bill Monroe Museum. He said, I stopped even opening the things I have purchased to put in a museum. So he said, make your trip down here. I'm ready to donate everything in my garage to the Bill Monroe Museum. So I'm excited to go. At this time, I'd like to go back and introduce the Bluegrass Youngins. <laughs> At this time, they are going to play Amazing Grace.
At this time, we're going to break ground. If I could have Ohio County Judge Executive David Johnson come forward. David was inter instrumental in getting our funding to have the museum. The Chamber of Commerce President Seth Southard. The Chamber has been behind the project and will continue to be behind the project. OCEDA Director Chase Vincent. OCEDA sees the importance and will stand behind the project for tourism and the development of the museum. PVA Officer Jason Chin. Jason, Jason was also instrumental in helping fund the museum and uh, obtaining the funds. Fifth District Magistrate, Larry Morphew. The museum is built in Larry's district and a supporter of the museum. Ohio County Tourism Chairman, Dan Lay. Tourism will be overseeing the museum as they're overseeing the project being built and will be overseeing the functioning of the museum. And our special guest today, James Monroe. Oh, he snuck in there, okay. <laughs> and his son, Jim Monroe. We're going to do this on a countdown. We'll start at five and dig dirt. Five, four, three, two, one. Gentlemen, shovel dirt. <laughs> <laughs> 